dancing in them, fighting in them, rolling around on the ground in them. So you were the head costumer at the Pop-Up Globe for about five years. Yep. Well, tell us about that. Tell us about costuming for seasons of Shakespeare plays and, uh, and, and the Globe. Yeah, it was amazing. Um, it was crazy, uh, full on. We had uh, three international transfers, one New Zealand domestic tour, one winter season and five New Zealand seasons, some seasons. I want to say five. Um, it, we didn't, um, my, my last five years kind of blurred because we didn't have a January to, to December type schedule. So when I think about it, I'm like, meh. Um, so it was amazing. We started uh, the department with nothing, um, you know, first needle, first cotton thread, uh, first sewing machine type thing. Um, trained probably by the end of it over 50 people up in historical costuming techniques that some of them came with some knowledge already but most um had modern knowledge uh yeah the the lovely pattern cutter sabrina that we had oh she was amazing she she was from a fashion background um and she took to it like a duck in water she was amazing um i remember in the first year um when she wasn't with us we had um a lovely person that just graduated from Toy Fukari um, and, and she couldn't get her head around the fact that just a rectangle of fabric was a collar, that that was all you needed. Nothing up, no, no weird like manipulation or trying to just a rectangle, it blew her mind. And, and trying to um, like teach people how to make um, uh, pumpkin pants for the first time was also hilarious. Oh, we had an amazing padded collection by the end of it. Uh, amazing costume collection. We had the largest costume, um, probably collection of Elizabethan and Jacobean costuming in, in the whole of Australasia. Um, wow. it, it was insane. I mean, we would probably produce five or 600 costume features, features? Five or hundred. <laughs> Yeah, five or six hundred costume pieces each season. Um, we made everything down to collars and cuffs, uh, corsets, um, socks. We we did linen ho uh, uh, socks one um, season for uh, Touchstone. Um, but yeah, we, it was it was insane. And so the seasons were also crazy. We had I remember one particular time just before for Christmas which in New Zealand everything shuts down for the whole of the summer holidays so you have to pre-buy everything you can't order anything and also in New Zealand it's very hard because we can't get anything in a next day turnaround like you can overseas we don't get Amazon delivering to us the next day we don't get eBay it, 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 things have to clear customs they cost a lot of money to get into the country so we, we had you know sock mules and shoe mules <laughs> Um, if people were coming from America or England and they could fit a couple of pairs of shoes in their bag, they would. Uh, <laughs> some of the actors and directors, it was quite amusing. Um, anything to save budget because, you know, it's um, the better we can look, make them look on stage, mm. uh, the better it was going to be. Um, had to buy all the shoes in from overseas. We didn't have anything in New Zealand. Wow. We didn't have costumes in New Zealand already. There was no great store or warehouse store couldn't go to the National Theatre like you can over in England, um, which is amazing, by the way, to go into. Um, we, did, we didn't have to, so we had to do it all from scratch. Amazing. And yeah, that for Christmas, we had two shows to put on stage from scratch. One was Macbeth, one was Comedy of Errors, and we had three weeks from cutting the cloth to putting it on stage. And that, that was generically... <sighs> usual in a lot of ways but that was particularly short time frame for us wow and that and was off track of just having done another two shows just before that and having like what felt like a week's turnaround to crazy go buy stuff and then do it all again yeah. um but yeah now, and then of course into yeah dressing and everything unbelievable now with the construction i am Am I right in surmising? Because I came and saw the very first season. Thank you very much for inviting me and getting me over there. Um, <laughs> you didn't use any modern techniques in regards to, I mean, you use sewing machines and that kind of thing, but 
when we're talking about getting people in and out of costumes, you weren't using zips and Velcro and that sort of thing, were you? Tell us a little bit about the construction itself. I I hate zips and costumes. I think they're the worst thing ever because they jam, they rip, and there's no place for them in Shakespearean costuming, in my opinion. Um, But this is just my opinion. People can feel free to disagree with me. Um, I uh, was in a position where um, I could use my prior knowledge from uh, reenactment and the SCA and other things and 20 years of wearing the stuff myself around campfires and fencing in it and you know literally living eating breathing dancing and these things and for me one of our biggest things was we were doing I mean some of these costumes did over 500 shows and some of these costumes did 500 shows in extreme heat in Australia, extreme cold in Australia. Um, I remember one day in Perth, we had um, in the, you know, single digits in the morning. And then by the afternoon, after a thunder and lightning storm with hail, they were in the, the mid thirties. Um, so, you know, it was crazy. Uh, <laughs> um, but, but, and so, you know, those costumes had to survive 40 degrees Celsius um, plus some days in uh, Melbourne in that first season as well. Um, so, and in, in New Zealand, we were, at, we, you know, we're an outdoor theatre no matter where we were. So we were getting rained on. We had no coverage in the yard or in yeah. the outside areas in the first season as well. Um, and the second, well, second season. So actors were waiting in the rain. Um, the, oh, the fit, really? The outfits had to literally cope with sun, rain, wind. Uh, we had cyclones come through in Auckland in, in our second season. <laughs> hilarious um so, you know so many things um and and they also had to then be dried and they had to go on an actor the next day and they had to keep fresh and we had to you know um but they couldn't be dry cleaned during season unless they were wow. really terrible um we had to put them through washing machines because of blood uh they had to be constructed like clothing um, and not like a costume and therefore we constructed them as a piece of clothing and my, my theory is and still it was and still is is that if these people 400 years ago in Shakespeare's time were dancing in them fighting in them rolling around on the ground in them you know um, literally wearing the same piece of clothing day in day out and we still have it 400 years later to look at then then the clothing that we needed to make for that stage that wouldn't rip in the crotch because we've gone, oh no, but the modern way is, you know, is better and we're going to stuff it with Dacron to make it sit out. No, don't stuff it with Dacron. Actually construct it with the blanket inside of it um, to, to have it hang and have the weight, but the breathability that wool has. Um, line it in the linen so we can actually have it breathe and have it, you know, uh, move the way it should do and hang the way it should do. Tie it at the, the waist with the ties because that allows the flexibility. Um, you know, it, it cut it up to the high natural waist <laughs> because, you know, that's where it's not going to, you know, expose an actor's butt crack or, or rip, you know, <laughs> <laughs> or rip out. And, and all of these things were you know tried and tested and true from people wearing them in period yeah. so we used the period patterns we use the period materials we couldn't always use silk linen you know um actually we always use linen what am i talking about we couldn't always use silk and, and uh um satin but there are good substitutes for them out there nowadays and yeah it just depended um oh, a lot oh. of them are best all of the Macbeth costumes were completely natural fibers. And I did use silk on a lot of those um, in the right places. So yeah, it's just, it just depends. Um, But yeah, it was a challenge. Um, And also favorite thing was getting, what did we have? We had 20 odd actors all in full on plate armor because we also used real armor. uh, that was also something that we weren't going to skimp on in terms yep. of look and aesthetic. Uh, um, and so full on plate armor, uh, out of their uh, gambesons and, and uh, trousers and plate armor and, and everything fully into court costume. So doublet hose, 
um, hat or the, the trimmings uh, cape within three minutes with only wow. stage, well, stage manager and a deputy and two dresses. So some, some quick changes. It was some quick changes. I mean, but the thing not, is, yeah. not necessarily quick by modern standards for some of the quick changes you see in modern, but to be able to get out of that period armour and clothing and into other period clothing, that's yeah, a pretty shoes, quick turnaround. You know, every single inch of their outfits had to be changed and shoes that you wear on the battlefield were not shoes that they were wearing at court. Yeah. Um, so we, we, <laughs> we had an actor backstage, Stanley, <laughs> and to keep everyone calm, we had him like saying the minutes and the times and the lines. So he's standing there as he's changed, going 23, 30. And I was like, and, and at one stage, I think I said, are you just making those up? And he was like, oh yeah, I don't know where we're up to. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, awesome. <laughs> So yeah, there were lots of moments like that where where a lot of actors they had to be self sufficient and they yeah. learned a lot, um, but they were really helpful and they, they they helped each other out. I loved them with all my heart and yeah, there, there was yeah and I mean wig changes as well. We're talking about wig changes as well as armor as well as court costumes. Yeah. It, was, it was crazy because with only you know a certain amount of of people in a cast. You've only got a certain amount of people in the cast, so they have yeah. to pay, pay so many different roles. Yeah, um, and you, I, you've got to help each other out. Yeah, so the hooks and eyes um, were the thing. Hooks and eyes down the bottom, uh, down front of doublets. It's like a gigantic onesie. Yes. Yeah. Just put it on. We, yeah, there, there's just, yeah, is what it. it is. Amazing. Yeah, it <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> it's crazy. It's fun. Yeah.